If you've been paying attention to what's going on in Ukraine, you've probably heard a few Cold War comparisons by now. Shades of the Cold War are returning. Why it could reignite Cold War flames with Russia. Many think the Cold War in that way is not over at all. It seems to be a replay of the Cold War in many ways. Okay, a lot of Cold War comparisons. American media have largely painted the conflict as one between East and West, with Ukraine's president a puppet of Russia and a majority of Ukrainians ready to splinter off and join with the rest of Western Europe. But has the media taken the Cold War comparisons too far? New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman says the analogy doesn't work here. The Cold War is a very specific thing, two nuclear armed powers and competing ideologies truly playing on a global chessboard. There are echoes of the Cold War, certainly. For proof, look no further than this video of protesters toppling a statue of Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin in December. Russia, of course, has interests in Ukraine. It's Ukraine's biggest economic partner, not to mention one of its largest military bases is located in Ukraine. Washington has largely sided with the opposition, whose protests were triggered in part by Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych's refusal to sign an agreement with the European Union. But viewing the crisis through a Cold War lens offers a pretty one-dimensional view. Consider this. Despite all the talk of a pro-EU, pro-democracy movement, only 43 percent of Ukrainians wanted the EU deal, according to a recent poll from a Kiev-based think tank, which would suggest there's more at play here. As this video put together by a group of Ukrainian journalists explains, most Ukrainians are just tired of a corrupt government and poor living standards, and that is what led them to protest. Forbes contributor Greg Sattel looks at it this way. This is not a matter of ideology or even geography, but one of corruption and human rights. So we're left with two competing narratives, one that pits angry Ukrainians against a corrupt president and another more geopolitical storyline. As for which is right, The Washington Post's Max Fisher says both can be. When it comes to understanding something as complicated as Ukraine's political crisis, sometimes you need to be able to hold two competing ideas in your head at the same time to make sense of things. For Newsy, I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn, Multiple Sources, A Broader View.